Lego Dimensions. This is the newest mainstream attempt to dethrone the Skylanders as the king of the interactive plastic toys. And I found it interesting. Each company has tried to do this, has found different ideas to run with it. It's not just Skylanders with Legos. It's both better and worse than that. I think Skylanders is the best of this concept. It's fun to play and has a good storyline and the characters are great to collect. Disney's Infinity tried to copy it and mostly failed. Their single player game is dull and overall I find it the worst of these. Now I'm sure some people out there are going to go, well what about Amiibos? Well I think of that more as physical DLC and not so much as a game. I know they're coming out with games that support it but eh, I don't really think it's the same thing. Lego Dimension starts off by making you build mostly everything. The portal and the characters themselves. Now in reality, you really don't have to do it. You can just use the bear portal and just have the minimum Legos on the character base. However, it's more fun to have it all built out. They do hold back on telling you how to build the car to have on-screen instructions to do this. And this seemed odd and pointless. If we want to have everything built before we start the game, we should have that option, just like we have with the portal and the characters. Now the story is a bit of a mess, because instead of having a known story to work off, they have an original tale that really is only a thin excuse to have different LEGO worlds interact. Lord Vortek wants to find all the foundational elements to merge the dimensions together so he can control them all. He grabs villains from the other dimensions to help him in his plan. Batman, Wildstyle, and Gandalf join up to slide from one dimension to another. They find more pieces of the dimensional portal and use its powers to boost up their powers as they travel through the dimensions. The places they visit are so random. They're always finding a piece of the portal wherever they go, but the narrative of the story is so jumbled it feels kind of shallow. The worlds can range from confusing to really fun. The best one had to be the Doctor Who world. It had a bunch of fun little things that the fans could enjoy, plus the storyline for that world made sense for the craziness of Doctor Who. Unfortunately, the Simpsons world I think was the worst. Characters only talked in voice clips from the show. Because of that, the levels are just one random place after another. There's no sense of why we're actually going to any of the places where we're going. The Simpsons house at the beginning was good, and then it just got worse. And then there's the middle of the road levels, like I think it was Ninja Go. I have no idea what this was or who these people were. The great idea behind this game was that you're supposed to go into places that you knew and had fun in the worlds that you only saw on the TV or the big screen. Let's stick to those please. Using characters from your own worlds is a bit of a cheat and should be only regulated to an outside pack if people wanted to buy it. Speaking of that, there are a few levels and character packs that you could buy for $30 or lower. The level packs add just one more level or character in a car. The character packs add more characters and give you access to different worlds that you can find in the main hub. Just like in other LEGO games, the other characters you could buy can be useful in parts you couldn't access in the levels that you have already gone through. The characters all play differently. They each have different abilities that they can use in the levels. Batman can use his batarangs to get high up objects, Gandalf can use magic, and Wildstyle is a master builder. It can make complex objects and jump really high. You can easily switch between them by pressing the X button, or holding down the X button to choose which character you want. The most disappointing thing in the game was the car controls, which were just terrible. The worst part is that there are a few points where the car is a necessity for beating a puzzle or defeating a boss, so it was so frustrating to play these parts. Now you do get unlimited lives, so there is no real penalty for death other than losing some bricks, which can be used for money. So at least the frustrating parts of this game are just a minor inconvenience because of that. The portal is very interactive, and it plays into the gameplay more than Skylanders or Disney's Infinity ever did. They have you move the characters around to three different parts of the portal to do different things. Sometimes putting a character on a certain part will open a portal in a different part of a level. Or it might give them special elemental powers. Or it just might play a paint by numbers type game. Okay, that was kind of lame. But at least they were trying to use the portal as something other than a glorified character select screen. However, it does feel problematic to move the characters around, especially in the middle part where it's just a small circle and it can only hold one character. It's easy for the base to become detached from the character in the heat of the battle. Now just like all the other LEGO games, you can play with one other person co-op, and it splits the screen if you ever need to do that, but the game can easily be played with just one person. LEGO Dimensions was a fun concept of a game, it's just too bad some of the levels were a letdown. That's not to say that it's all bad, but it really did suffer from not having an established storyline to pull from. One of the biggest problems with the game really was the cost though. 
Currently the title is $100 just to play the base game. Now you can beat the regular storyline with just the base game, but you won't get to play any of the expanded universe. So this is one of the most expensive one of these type of games on the market. The problem is all gimmicks aside, this is no different than any other Lego game on the market. The gimmick of the portal does change things up a little bit, but not enough for me to recommend it at such a high price of $100. I think you should wait for it to go on sale for like $50 or $60 if you think this game looks interesting to you. Well that's my review of Lego Dimensions. Why don't you check out my last review of Perpetual Blast or my classic review of Lego Jurassic World. I thank you guys for watching and please subscribe.